I think it's really important that we begin to understand strategy, in particular the opposition strategy. I worked um, as an organizational development consultant for 26 years. I worked primarily with advertising agencies and PR companies as well as TV broadcasting stations. So. The candidates, the opposition, are taking in some very classical PR maneuvers. And it's very important that we be consciously aware of those PR maneuvers and let that help dictate how we then have our own strategy to counteract. So let's go through some of the points of what's happening right now. First of all, number one, get big money to fuel your campaign election. Obviously, we're in a transitional phase. And there's a lot of big corporations, a lot of big money, a lot of investors who see that this is their opportunity, this window right now. So they're investing, but their investments are for primarily for their shareholders and for short-term profits. Not the people, not the INA. Next. They really, what this is a battle about is shaping our subconscious beliefs. And a good way to do that is hire PR firms. A good PR firm whose messages evoke emotions. That's why you're going to get your primarily emotions based on baseball, family, pets. Ohana, as was mentioned, you know, people now talking about community and stuff. Because it pulls on the emotional heartstring. And if you take that emotion, then that's what really penetrates to a subconscious level. The other piece of this then, you take that message and you blast it. It's amazing. Every time I pick up a paper, there's Alan Arakawa, there's Mike Victorino, I turn on the radio, there's Mike on the radio, you know, talking about how he loves baseball and kids sports and stuff. So, but this is it. This is, this is, again, repetition will go into the subconscious beliefs and shape the subconscious. So that's why it's so important and why they're fueling it with so much money to repeat messages that are about feel good. And, and, and if you repeat a story enough, if you repeat it enough, it appears as the truth in the way it is. That's right. Goebbels was, was involved, and that's one of his main themes. If you tell it enough, repeat it enough, it becomes true. Next. And that's, that's basic PR strategy. Another thing is, another PR strategy that's being employed right now is mimic the opponent's platform. Uh, so what you do is you eliminate distinctions on issues that way. So then it becomes about personality and about these feel-good messages that are being put out consistently. So really, it's about then, you, if you mimic the opponent's platform and you tell them what you think they might want to hear, then that becomes your repeated message. It has nothing to do with the truth. It has nothing to do with where you're gonna come from. It's not gonna anything to do in terms of what's gonna happen in terms of future decision. We've seen the Trump pledge and how far that goes in terms of actually integrating promises. So, next. Mimic the opponent's media. Uh, create confusion and manipulation by using their brand. I'm not kidding you. Cards going out, one Ohana candidate. That's what they're putting out, one Ohana candidate. Many of you probably have received mailers along that line. PR strategy, create confusion. Anything to get away from truth and distort. That's what the strategy's about. So, so, uh, so please, they even used uh, Tamara and, and Kelly on, on, on the card. Along with Ricky and... Along with Ricky and, and the other candidates. So, so these are, this is again, confusion, a strategy, 
so that, again, it shows though that they're scared. Because <laughs> they repeat, if they, if they are utilizing our same media and our same approach, it shows that we're doing something right. <laughs> so, okay. Next one. Attack if anyone brings up voting records, funding sources, or facts. I don't know how many of you have gone to the debates, but I certainly have been to a bunch of them. And a good example is when Ellie asked about funding sources, and Mike's response was, I take the high road. I take the high road. I don't go into that. And he waves his finger like that, too. Shaming, attacking back, you know, and says, I don't play dirty like my opponent. And then he won't answer the question. And then, you see, but it's a PR strategy. The other is that we need to develop a community conversation, our grassroots efforts. So there's several things that we're going to be talking about uh, in the next 20 minutes that hit on a lot of things that we can all participate in. Okay, uh, next one. So, so really, it's about engaging community, grassroots volunteers, you know, so this is it, you know? 19 days, this is the time to sound the alarm. So I, I really encourage all of you and, and all of you on Facebook and all of you on Akaku who are listening, uh, all those who tune in uh, to our uh, YouTube, please realize that we have a very short time fuse. Okay. So here's what we're going to do in the next little time. We have several people who have been actively involved in different aspects of supporting what we're doing. And uh, in order to go through this, we're going to talk about Maui Vote Smart. We're going to talk about writing, social media, video distribution, card distribution, sign waving, donations, radio sparts, banners, and phone banks. <laughs>